So in order to answer that question, let's do the math. So what I'm interested in is the probability that I am in the position X now given that I did some measurement C. Right, and according to Bayes' rule, so that's Bayes, this is the probability of having the measurement given that I'm in the position X. So as you can see, using Bayes, we can flip those two variables times the probability of X divided by the probability of the measurement. And as you know, this is the same as the sum of the numerator for all possible x values. And so in order not to get confused, so that's the loop variable here, x dash. So the denominator here just is a sum over all possible numerators. And so it's just a normalization constant. So the result is this. And actually we did something like that earlier. When I told you how the manufacturer calibrates the scanner, you know I had two figures. One was manufacturer calibrates the scanner by setting a known x of 5 meters and then looking at the probabilities that he measures certain values. Whereas we are interested in where the scanner is if it gives us a certain measured distance. And so this means for our result, if this is our p of x and this is the prior and this is our measurement, which is the probability of measuring a value given x. Then we can compute p of x given c by multiplication. So this is p of x and we have to multiply this by p of c given x and this gives us p of x given c. And so in the end this curve might look like this and this is called the posterior because it is the probability of being at x after we incorporate our measurement. And remember, we always have to normalize this and this becomes clear because if you are at this position and you measure a distance that leads to this probability distribution, then since those distributions have approximately the same width, then your final solution should lead to something like that. And that is astonishing somehow if you look at those distributions because you may think something like this will be the result, right? But that's not true because this peak here is in the tail, very small values of this other peak, here there's a, the multiplied values are very very small and the same holds here because this peak is in the tail of that curve, the multiplied values are very small. And so what is hard to believe, you see it for the first time, is that those values here, they are very small but much larger than those, they have to be multiplied with those values and they actually will give you the peak. And so you see here the normalization is very important because these are small values that lead in the end to a large value and that is just because the entire result, the entire distribution, all those values are very small so summing them up gives a very small value but if you normalize each value by that you will still get a peak and so of course the sum over the entire distribution will be 1.0 again. So now let's implement this. So what I prepared for you is a main function that is really very simple. So it sets a position and a position error and then generates a position distribution, namely in this case a triangle distribution, using that position and error. And then this is plotted. And the very same thing is done for the measurement, which now is not 400 but 410 and the measurement error is twice as large as the position error. And for this also a triangle distribution is used using the measurement value and the measurement error. And then finally the multiply function and this is the function you should implement up here is called and it is given both distributions and returns a position after measurement or a posterior distribution. And this is plotted as well. So the position is plotted in blue, the measurement in green and the resulting distribution in red. And if you implement that correctly you should see the following. So this is the prior and this is the measurement. So the prior is centered at 400 whereas the measurement is slightly off here at 410 and the measurement is twice as wide as the prior. And now if you look at the posterior you see the following. Even though the measurement was less accurate than the prior, the posterior is even more accurate than the prior leading to a higher peak in probability. So that's interesting. Now first please program the multiplication of distributions. 